Hello, I'm Adrian Rue, and this is Toolbox, a resource for local preachers, worship leaders, and small group leaders. Uh, we're focusing on Mark's Gospel, and the passage we're looking at today is Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34, and then again 53 to 56. Really quite a strange choice of verses that the lectionary seems to have made, because it seems to focus on the bits that lie around the two main events that are there in the Gospel. But perhaps it is intentional and perhaps it will force us to look at some of the things that we might have ignored otherwise or might not have noticed as we focused on the, the more obvious, flashier miracles that are there in Mark chapter 6. In verse 30, the disciples return from their mission and Jesus instructs them to withdraw to the wilderness for reflection, as is often his own practice. But as they seek to escape from the pressures of ministry, the crowds thwart them and they cannot find solitude. They cannot find solitude even in the wilderness. And there in verse 34, we hear Jesus having his guts wrenched. The Greek word is something like splagchisnozomai. And that means something like compassion. We might expect it to be exasperation, but that it's certainly not. It's, it's, a, it's a deep feeling of compassion. And because of this compassion that he has, Jesus teaches them until late. He sees them. He has compassion. He sees them as, as sheep without a shepherd. And that's a, a well-established Old Testament metaphor, speaking of the lack of political will and leadership for the good of the nation. Uh, that is is lacking by the nation's supposed leaders. Moses in uh, Numbers 27 verse 17 prays that the people will have a leader so that they will not find themselves like a sheep without a shepherd. And the prophets uh, condemned the kings for failing to act as shepherds towards Israel. 1 Kings 22 verse 17. Zechariah condemned those shepherds who sell their own flock to get rich. Zechariah 11 verse 5. And Ezekiel criticizes the ruling class of Israel as shepherds who've been feeding themselves. And he promises a new age. An age in which God will shepherd the people. Ezekiel 34 verses 4 to 6. And Jesus responds to the plight of these people by teaching them many things. And so he presents himself as their shepherd. And perhaps the green grass on which the crowds are told to recline, verse 39, relates to the shepherd image, claiming Jesus' actions in some ways reenact or link us to Psalm 23, verse 2. That claim would be enhanced by the feeding miracle that follows, but which the lectionary skips over, an account of the provision of people's basic needs within the kingdom, in contrast to the way they often miss out within the market system. Faced with a problem in that story, it's not for us to respond that we can't do anything, that we're too small or we're too inadequate or, or anything like that, that we need to do this or that first. Nor can we say it's the responsibility of government or the big business. None of those things are applicable that would let us off the hook. Rather, we're taught to ask what we do have and to make a small start. Jesus asks them to focus on what they do have and not on what they don't have. This obviously alludes to the old story of the wilderness manor, which as we've seen undergirds the Sabbath economies of grace. But Mark is also drawing upon the food miracles of Elisha during a time of famine. 2 Kings 42 to 44. And this suggests that there are economic dimensions to Mark's wilderness feedings and that they're just more than Eucharistic symbolism. From this wonderful high church moment of community and Holy Spirit, we all had them, we then go straight from there to the other side. What is the point of church if it stays inside our own buildings in our own ways and isn't taken to the others who are on the other side? And the lectionary also skips over the second sea journey, which in many ways mirrors the calming of the storm that we looked at in chapter 4. Here, their hardened hearts and their lack of understanding mean that they don't get to the other side. They don't get to the Gentile side and the mission is aborted by a, a return to Jewish territory, to safe territory. 
all through the passage, the distance between Jesus and the disciples is emphasized. And again, this is an example of the kingdom community coming to face to face with institutionalized social divisions between Jews and Gentiles. And the, the disciples struggle to make that journey of integration, to make that open-armed welcome to all people. And so, so the difficulty is always en route to the other side. The whole symbolic universe opposes this integration. And no doubt, the real-life social hostility threatened to drown the community as well. But Jesus rescues the community. Jesus rescues the community and silences the winds of opposition. Notice how, how Jesus' healing extends to every sphere of life. When they'd crossed over, well, first we need to ask why the strange geography. Uh, because particularly they don't cross over, they don't reach the other side, they, they end up going out onto the lake and coming back on the same side of the lake. Despite what it says in, uh, in verse 53, in verse 53 some translations say when they had crossed over. But, but that's probably a translation issue where the translator has made some assumptions tied to Jesus saying go to the other side. The word in Greek, the one word in Greek denotes that the crossing was complete. But does this mean that they were finished with the crossing rather than that the crossing had been successful? Because the geography seems to indicate that the crossing wasn't successful. Is it perhaps saying that having come through the storm, or this incident now having been completed. You see, they land at a place called Gennesaret. And it's interesting, I'm just going to read to you a little bit about what he said about Gennesaret, because it might help us understand some of what is happening. Uh, during the time of Christ, this plain, Gennesaret, was the garden spot of Palestine. Josephus eloquently described its beauty and fertility, the soil was rich like that of the Nile Delta. The climate ranged from hot to temperate. Plenty of water for irrigation was available from streams flowing out of the surrounding hills and from several flowing springs. The land produced an abundance of wild trees and flowers as well as important crops such as grapes, figs, olives, walnuts, rice, wheat, vegetables and melons. The rabbis spoke of this plain as the Garden of God and described it as a paradise. That's the place that Jesus takes them to at the end of their failed mission. At the end of their failure to, to, to get across to the other side and to complete the mission of God. Jesus doesn't abandon them. They're not being punished. He takes them to a new place where they can find peace, where they can recuperate, uh, where they can once again find themselves in their comfort zone and be ministered to and nursed, not disregarded and, and discarded. It doesn't change the fact, though, that the hardened hearts didn't get to the other side. They'd been down this road, in this boat, across this lake before. It seems that disciples just don't learn. Verse 54 is a continuation of the message of the loaves as all the people come from all over to join this integrated community of grace and healing. Notice all the places that they come from. Notice all the places that ministry is happening. And it's a picture of the unmeasured and indiscriminate generosity of Jesus towards the needy, making it a fitting companion uh, account to the feeding. Mark has this racially mixed multitude in mind for in recording that Jesus permitted the suppliants to touch his cloak, his, his craspedon. He surely echo, echoes Zechariah 8 verse 23 in its Greek form, where it says, In those days men out of all the tongues of the nation will take hold of the craspedon, the, the cloak of the Jew, saying, We will go with you because we have heard that God is with you. We have heard that God is with you. Does that tie to the theophany appearance that was left out of the, uh, of the lectionary of Jesus wanting to pass them by on the lake? And yet somehow here, the non-Jews 
the Gentiles are recognizing the presence of God, the, the appearance of God in their midst. God bless.